So we'll go ahead and get started. It is five o'clock. It is Monday, February 6th. Um, this is the meeting of the City Council Committee on City Services. Just a note that this meeting and all who are in it um, are being audio and video recorded. I'm gonna start with calling the roll. Um, I'm gonna go in alphabetical order here. Um, so Councillor Foster, I am here. Councillor Gore? Here. Councillor Labarge? Here. <laughs> Councillor Perry? <laughs> oh, you can't unmute. I'm sorry, let me make you a co-host. Okay, I'm gonna make everyone a co-host. Oh, I'm here. Yay. Great. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, the minutes from January 3rd aren't linked to the agenda. So I'm gonna um, skip number three because there are no members of the public here for public comment and skip um, number four minutes of previous meetings, which brings us to item five, um, items referred to committee. Um, and this is uh, 5A, the appointment to the Disability Commission, which was referred by the City Council um, of Amy Sugihara of 110 Morningside Drive in Florence. And Councillor Perry, who just disappeared, was the person who's going to report on his conversation with Amy. So we'll, um, we'll riff for one second while Councillor Perry gets back in. All right. Welcome back. Sorry, that was very weird. Everything just shut down. Wow. wow, you made it back at impeccable timing. I was just wow. introducing that we are going to discuss the appointment of Amy Sugihara to the Disability Commission, and you are the counselor that had a chance to talk with her. <laughs> yes, uh, and so I had a lovely conversation with Amy. Um, as Councilor Foster had told me, she's been a volunteer at All Out Adventures. Um, she talked a lot about how that really helped her connect with this community. Um, She's only been here for a year and uh, they, they moved here. Her husband works over at Hampshire and she believes this is, will be a way for her to give back and also um, to, to feel more entrenched in this community. Um, she has already been attending. I think she said she's been to almost every meeting since she's moved here for the Disability Commission, except for one. Um, so she has an idea of kind of what things um, will look like for her and you know when I asked about what she was most excited to do or, or what she thought she could bring and one thing was just um, communication with the public you know she had she had noticed that sometimes people in the public comment would ask a question and it would take a little bit of time to to get someone to come back and um, she really felt that kind of tidying up that process would help every everyone feel heard um, and, and also make you know, the, the city feel more accepting and open to those with disabilities. Um, you know, when we discussed what her biggest strengths were, it was a lot of <clears throat> just being willing to, to listen, to respect and respond to others. Um, you know, I think that it's, it's great finding someone who has moved from another area who immediately feels like this is a good place and a good fit for, for them. Um, <clears throat> so with that being said, I will, put forward, I'll make a motion to put forward a positive recommendation for Amy. Second it. Okay, thank you. Co uh, motion made by Councilor Perry and seconded by Councilor Labarge. Is there any discussion on this appointment? Councilor Labarge. Yes, um, I wanna echo what um, Garrett Perry was talking about. Um, Amy, yes, she has attended every, every meeting and she has had concerns yeah. about a communication when the public comes and they ask about something and the answers are not given back in a timely manner. That is absolutely correct. Great. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? I'll just jump in to um, say how lucky I think Northampton is that Amy is interested in serving on the Disability Commission. She's just truly um, just a, a wonderful human being. And she's one of those people who has an idea and then gets things done. So if you remember from last spring, No Mo May, um, it was Amy who actually reached out to Councilor Maori um, to spearhead No Mo May and, yeah. um, and her work on the Disability Commission. And she's like, uh, she's remarkable. She says she's gonna do something. And then like, there she is doing the work. Um, so I, I think um, 
Northampton will benefit from her presence. So that, that's just wonderful. Um, and I did as Councillor Perry said, and I forgot to formally declare, but I will for the, the council meeting as well. Um, Amy is a volunteer with All Out Adventures uh, where I work, but there's no reason I can't vote on her appointment. Um, so with that being said, let's do a roll call um, and we'll start and go in alphabetical order again. Um, so Councillor Foster, yes. Councillor Gore? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. And Councillor Perry? Yes. Thank you. So that motion passes four to zero. Um, which brings us one second. Which brings us to um, item B23.236, appointment to the elected officials compensation advisory board. And this is for the appointment of Deb Henson. And I just wanna process note, um, this was just referred to us from city council on Thursday evening. So it's too soon for us as a committee um, to take a vote. This is the same rule we ran into a couple months ago. Um, so what we'll do is we'll discuss the appointment and then um, we'll vote during the next city council meeting. So a quick question on this process for you councilors, would you prefer to have a very quick city services meeting right before the next city council meeting? Or would you prefer to recess briefly for city services during the city council meeting so we can make a recommendation? So we have two alternatives to recess, right? Yeah, to recess or I think last time did Councilor Gore, you ran that meeting. Did we start yeah, at 6 30? We, we had it beforehand, before the yeah. city council meeting. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Um and, and I'm fine either way. If if that works well for you all, if you're available that evening to start a little early, we can do that. Um and if that doesn't work for you, then we can just recess during city council. Either which way is fine with me. Okay. You, oh, because oh, because you came back in. Hang on. Yeah, I was actually kind of looking at you, Councillor Perry, because um, I was wondering your schedule. All right. Um, I I can do either. Uh, either okay. one works. Good, so I'm flexible. Okay. And what about you, Councillor Gore? Yeah, I can do I can do either one. Okay. What I'll do then is check with Laura. Um, and and see her preference and timing, and then we'll get back to you. Okay. Um, but that being said, I'll go ahead and report out. Um, I was the counselor assigned to talk with Deb. Um, as I think you know, I had a weekend. Um, I didn't talk with her, but I still feel confident recommending her um, or speaking about her for the uh, elected officials compensation advisory board. Um, she had reached out to me and counselor Moulton and counselor Nash um, because she's been really seeking an opportunity to serve on a city board or commission. Um, she had considered the planning board was when she had considered um, and Councillor Nash looked at her experience. Um, she's an attorney practicing in another state and she's been um, pretty heavily involved with the city. Um, she was actually one of the spearheaders behind the um, work to save the St. John Cantius church. Um, so talk about people who get stuff done when they believe in it. That's Deb Henson. And she was feeling pretty flexible about um, what appointment she had. She just wanted to get more involved in the city and knowing that this was a time sensitive um, committee, um, that the, the committee's work will need to be done within a couple of months. Um, and, and she was there ready to serve. Um, Councillor Nash recommended to the mayor's office um, that we consider Deb Henson and Councillor Moulton reached out to me with a recommendation and um, she was my constituent briefly before reprecincting, and um, would also recommend her. So with that, I will make a, oh, I will not make a motion. Um, I will make, if I were to make a motion, I would make a positive recommendation um, and we'll do that at the next um, city council meeting. Um, any discussion on that appointment? It's not a motion, just a discussion. Councilor Labarge. Yes, thank you. Um, also too, with um, Hanson, if you look at all the research she did for that church was unbelievable. Very knowledgeable when she presented everything that was needed to make that happen. So I, I have to agree. I think this is a very good appointment. Great. Uh, so if there's no further discussion, we'll move on to um, item six, the role of city services and board and commission appointments as a follow-up to the select committee discussion. So Councilor Labarge, just by way of introduction here, um, 
both councillors Gore and Perry, they're serving on the select committee to reduce barriers to service. And they asked me to, the, the select committee had asked me to come um, to a recent meeting to discuss the role of the city services committee in mayoral appointments. Yeah. And um, we were veering into a discussion um, that wasn't on an agenda of this committee. Um, so we agreed to pause and put it on the agenda of this committee um, so that we could discuss. And, and what had happened is at our very first meeting, we started to enter this discussion. Um, but now that we're into the process for a year or so, it seems time to revisit. Um, so with that being said, this is sort of a, a chance for us to revisit if we have any changes we may want to make, um, ideas to bring up, conversation about the role that our committee is playing in these appointments. And Councillor Score and Perry, I don't know if you want to talk more about where the select committee, how this was raised at select committee or, or not, no pressure. I think um, in the select committee, we were just curious about the whole process of, of getting people into committees and commissions. And so seeing as how this is like a stepping point to getting to a commission, we wanted to hear from somebody from city services. Yeah. Now, when you say you want to hear from somebody on city service, are you talking about the process of the appointments going on to a board or a commission? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, the process. Okay. I, I think it's a process that you know for a fact that the mayor is the one that goes through all the appointments, the individual who's applying for it, and makes a selection. We're not involved in that process at all. I wish we were, because I'd like to know how many other people apply for a position to be on a board or commission that we don't know. We just get that one certain individual. One thing that had come up at that meeting was a conversation about if we wanted to consider reaching out to the chair when appointments come before us mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, that that, you know, to their, the reason that was brought up was somebody from the select committee was concerned that there's a, a view of our committee as, you know, sort of, going to confirm all appointments, right? Um, and so that was one idea that had been brought up was did we want to consider reaching out to the chair um, you know, of, of any committee that we're considering um, an appointment for? I think it would be nice if the whole committee was able to see the people that applied mm -hmm. the positions. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen that happen. That's all I've seen happen was an appointment coming out of the mayor's office. We don't know anything about anybody else who's applied for. So you're asking my opinion. It'd be nice if we knew how many people actually apply to be on it. Yeah. So Gary, yeah, Council Perry, yeah. And I, I think some of our discussion too, just to, to fill Council Labarge in, um, came down to, as, as I kind of said in the, um, I was talking about Amy in the Disability Commission, is that we talked a lot about communication. Uh, there seemed to be a, a, a sense that when people apply for certain positions, uh, it, you're kind of sending these things into the ether um, and, and just kind of uh, finding ways to streamline the processes and let people know that you know, you're being attended to as opposed to, um, <clears throat> you know, you're kind of just waiting for for something random. Um, and we also, Council Labarge talked about uh, Megan, um, who is the chair for the Human Rights Commission, has come up with an amazing handbook for, um, you know, it's, it's specific right now to the Human Rights Commission, but it's something that could be utilized for broader city services. And mm -hmm. so I, I think I may have mentioned this, I can't remember if I did, Karen, um, or Councilor Foster, uh, that we could maybe host this handbook on a city services page or have a link to that. And, and a lot of what they had in it, uh, Marianne was, there was just a link to Robert's Rules of Orders. Uh, it talks about, you know, the way that our government is structured with a strong mayor. Um, there is kind of a, 
when she also had a list of kind of what past agendas were and the typical, you know, how long it would take. Just the little bits of information that I think um, people who are looking to to go into city service might like. So, right. Also, too, which I can recall that we've had applicants waiting and waiting to hear about an appointment and almost a year, one person did not hear anything and applied. And when she finally got a call, she already got some, some, some other place where she went and got a job. You know? So this type of stuff is important here. When people are applying, they shouldn't have to wait for many, many, many months. They should be told, well, right now there's not an opening available in any commissioner board. At least let them know that. This person waited almost a year and finally got a call. Yeah, that's something we've been talking about in, in the select committee a lot, about how, how can we get back to people and not just leave them out there wondering. There you go. Yep, I agree with that. What's difficult is that that piece I think will come from, has to come from the mayor's office. And, you know, we can certainly talk with the mayor um, mm -hmm. to, to better understand their process, um, you know, and, and what their um, sort of goals for communication are. And I always try when I interview people or talk with people who are up for appointment to let them know what the next steps are. So they know, you know, kind of like when it'll be up at city services, when it'll be at the next council meeting and, when they would expect to hear back from the mayor's office. So that's, you know, once we get an appointment, that's a role we can take. And that's um, what I do, I yeah. tell them. Exactly, yeah. once we interview them, then it's gonna be going to city council on such a date. If not, it would be the following two weeks, <clears throat> you know, to give them heads up on this information. But my main concern is with all my colleagues here, is how many people actually apply, like the Commission on Disability, the Human Rights, right down the line. How many apply and how did they actually select an individual? That's a big question. Say, it, say three people apply to get onto the Human Rights Commission. So, how did they take three people and select one? I'm just concerned about it. Is that something that the select committee is looking is looking at as part of the scope? Yeah. I think it's something we're investigating, but I, I think it's, I mean, I thought it was at the mayor's discretion. It is, this is the two separate branches here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So do we want to, so there's that piece, which hopefully the select committee, you know, will address in their report and recommendations, which I, I sure would expect uh, you would, because I've, I've heard a lot of conversations sort of about the timeline and the process and people knowing where they're at and that. Um, and then there's, there's our part of the process of once we, once we see an appointment and it's, um, yeah, so you know the way we've been handling it is we see one. I sort of think about either is it you know in another counselor's ward or somebody that I think a counselor would that either the person or the counselor would benefit from a connection or somebody that maybe they wouldn't have crossed paths before. So I try to be really thoughtful about sort of who's talking to whom, um, and then you know we do the interview and report back. Um, but if we want to make any changes to that process, you know we we have another year as a committee that we could work differently than we have been. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't have to. I just wanted to make sure we had room for discussion. Yeah. Councilor uh, Perry, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say I, I I'm very thankful for your you know you're, you're clearly I think doing a, a good job of, of kind of pairing up people. Everyone who I've interviewed has been a really excellent connection. Um, and people who I, some of them are people that I have wanted to talk to. Um, one thing that, you know, I just want to bring back is the kind of that discussion about talking to the chairs of committees and commissions. And I think that maybe that's something we could do is just have, I don't know if it's a round table or just 
send out an invite to some of the chairs and see, um, you know, what they're looking for, who, you know, who, who or what kind of folks they would like to see join their committees. Because I don't, I don't know if that is part of the process currently, um, but I feel like that would, that would help uh, at least the chairs feel like they're more in the loop as well. Mm -hmm. I know I was talking with Megan because I asked her about Chelsea Klein mm -hmm. and she said they hadn't had a meeting for like, I think a couple of months and people are coming and they're going. And that's been a problem with the Human Rights Commission for some time. Because I, I remember with Sarah and a bunch of them were very, very upset about things that were going on in there. But I think now with Megan and Chelsea and more people coming into it, maybe there'll be changes. Yeah, my understanding is that chairs are not, as a matter of course, contacted. And I'm considering, I'll need to reach out to the mayor's office um, because when we as city services, when we bring people in, those requests go through the mayor. Like if we were to host a round table of, of board of commission chairs, um, I can reach out to the mayor's office to see um, where they're at with that. Mm -hmm. The other thing is nothing, you know, I did when we were looking at the um, community preservation committee, I did reach out to the chair um, for that one. Um, but, you know, certainly as counselors doing our due diligence, um, you know, I, I don't see a reason why we can't, um, but what I can do is confirm that um, with the mayor's office as well. Um, I, I'd like yeah. also what Councillor um, Perry brought forth about doing a round table with the chairs. I, th yeah. I think that's an excellent idea. Me too. I think that's a really intriguing one. Yeah. Um, why don't we do this? So at our next meeting, at our March meeting, um, Meredith O'Leary is not able to make it, but the assistant commissioner will make that meeting um, with an update on the Department of Community Care and where there's, that's at. So we can check in and, and kind of get a solid understanding. Um, they decided that it was better to come in February than March because they're posting for a director position. Um, so hopefully they'll know a lot more by, by then. Um, so why don't we look at um, a chair and commission, a cha board and commission chair roundtable um, uh, for our April meeting. And Laura and I um, can work with the mayor's office um, to make that to make that happen. Okay, a roundtable mm -hmm. chairs for the what the building department? No, uh, the chairs of boards, different boards and commissions oh, okay. uh, for the April meeting. So we can kind of get a sense from, from the chairs okay. um, what they're looking for. Will we have just one chair at a time or all the chairs? Or? I'm sort of picturing it like um, some of the previous kind of roundtable discussions with maybe three, four, five people um, so that we can get a variety of perspectives. Is Councillor Perry, is that what you meant when... I just wanted to check in to make sure I'm understanding. Wow. That sounds okay. good. Okay. All right. And we'll try to get a diversity, um, you know, um, sort of different goal, different perspective um, boards and commissions. And um, we can see if we can have a really thoughtful discussion and there might be ways that we can support them as well uh, with recruitment and outreach for, uh, for solid people to serve. So it might be a really healthy discussion. Sounds okay. great. Great. Um, which brings us to, oh, oh, I'm also, sorry, I don't want to cut it short. Any more discussion on this matter? Yeah, Councilor LaBarge. No, not on that, okay. but about our director of the Department of Public Works. I had requested if we could get her to come in to talk about, I don't know, we're up 19 positions here. Oh, so he came a year ago, 19, when I talked with Donna two months ago, 19 positions she was hurting for and I have great concerns about that and now with the civil service I think that's going to help us here opening the doors of people applying on that but I have requested that you as chair if you could see if we could get her to come in and talk about DPW and what help does she need here 
Oh, sure, Counselor. I, I must, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I thought when we, we followed up later, because we were looking at the change um, away from civil service um, and also thinking that it's actually much more citywide than just one department. I know, um, you know, that, that sort of now, my invoice kind of globally, not. there's challenges with hiring. So do we want to look at maybe human resources in general um, or, or is, is your, your focus just on DPW? My concern is, like I had stated, was it the Department of Public Works, if we could have the director, Donna Rascalia, come in to talk, see how she's doing in the department right now with the short of staff. Okay. That's all. Great. Sure. Sure. Thank I will you. um I will make I will make that request um for the March if meeting. She can. If she yeah, because it should be quick. Yep. Great. I will I will reach out. Thank you. Yeah, I my misunderstanding on that. That's yep. fine. That's okay. Fine. Um and so then that brings us to the last topic, um, seven, new business, um, which is exploring ways to support expanded public participation in meetings. By way of background, um, Councilor Gore, I did bring you into the loop as vice chair on this, um, what this conversation is about. And I, I think actually both Councilor Perry and Gore with your perspective on the select committee, this will be really good. Um, we, we introduced it briefly at the last city council meeting. Um, that at the moment, the governor's order allowing remote meetings, it's set to expire at the end of March. My guess is that that will be extended, um, but at the same time, I think it's sort of a decision point for the council to think about how we want to move forward as a council. And we'll have that, that greater discussion in council, but I think the role city services can play is looking at, um, are there ways the city can support um, more opportunities for the public to participate. Um, you know, I think we've all seen that in remote meetings and remote participation, public participation has skyrocketed. Um, you know, so many more people are able to, I've seen it with planning board meetings and council meetings and, you know, all kinds of meetings where, where people are um, participating remotely that wouldn't, um, for a whole variety of reasons, be able to be in the room. Um, and so that that's something that I think as, as a council, we're pretty committed to carrying forward. Um, but the question is knowing that there are still some people who are left behind by that. Um, you know, I think, people, excuse me, I can't hear you. Oh, oh, sure. There's some people who are still left behind by that. Something like 83% of adults have smartphones, but we saw it with Councillor Nash's constituent, you know, um, at the beginning of this term, I think, and he, she would like call him on the phone and then he would hold, like hold the phone up so she could participate. So we know that there are still some people who don't have access to the technology or the knowledge to get onto Zoom to participate in a meeting. And so that just brought up um, a conversation of different ways we could um, you know, potentially support members of the public who don't have access to their own device or know how to use Zoom to be able to, um, participate in a public hearing or a public comment um, if they wanted to. Um, so we were just kicking around ideas. I, I don't know the hours at Forbes, um, you know, I don't know what opportunities there may be, um, but at City Services, it seems like we could do some poking around um, to see what we may, um, as a committee, uh, be able to offer to the discussion. Yeah, Councilor Labarge. Yes. Um, I'm not going to participate in this right now, which you know why. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to yep. obligate myself. Absolutely. To anything right now. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. But if but, you have ideas of directions we should look, um, then those of us who, uh, who have the I bandwidth this month could take, take on a little bit. Yeah. The yeah. only thing that I am recognizing is that when we have something very, very special, okay? Like we've had Bill Dwight that was supposed to be coming in and so forth like that on, um, I think, was it the cameras, mm -hmm. right? That's a biggie, that's a biggie in the city. And all of us counselors sponsored, you know, for that 100% on the surveillance cameras. And we, I know for a fact, we did have people on Zooming over that. 
And at city council, it was packed, packed. My main concern in city service is sometimes we don't have any public, no matter what. Even when we didn't Zoom, we didn't have very much public. Only when there was either a director being appointed, just like at the senior center, we had disgruntled people coming in. And Maureen Carney will tell you about that, okay? I don't wanna go into any more details on that, but it's usually hot items. And I feel right now with the Zooming, the way we're doing it is fine. I don't have a problem with it, but I think when we have a subject that's gonna bring in people, we should be at council chambers. That's my feelings. I have a lot of people out here who won't come. Right. They prefer doing Zooming. Right, right, right. And that's because of the parking and some of them don't get out of work to work till four o'clock in the afternoon. They have children mm -hmm. and so forth like that. It's, I think we have more people Zooming now than we ever had coming into city council chambers only over a heated situation. I mean, look what we had in Zooming over what 40 something people on the reparation. And I took the notes down on people talking and there was like almost 40 something people. Yeah, and I think, am I, I think am, that, I getting, am I getting calls now, counselor? Oh boy, terrible. Well, I, I think the goal Rich though is to... These calls are not nice coming into my home and I've got to listen to it. I've got to listen to the threats of what they're doing. It but I think the goal is that we we want to keep that remote public participation because we've seen how much it's expanded. Right. But then to think about the people that um, don't know how to open the agenda and click the link or don't have the access. And it might be really minor, but it's that making sure that our meetings are really, truly open exactly. and accessible. How yeah. about like Forbes Library? Don't they have a process there of training people on computers and so forth like that? That's one thing we should definitely investigate um, is, is it, but the thing is, I think it's incumbent on us um, as a council and the select committee is really just discussing this as well to make sure that we reduce as many barriers as we can. Right. So How somebody may, anyway, it's worth, it's worth considering training, but maybe that might present a barrier if you have to think like, geez, I want to participate in a public meeting. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the library and I'm going to get training and and then do it, but what if you could just show up somewhere and, and have access? Well, um, but we can explore the library for sure. I think and, we could look at Forbes Library and Lilly Library. People okay. up in the Florence area, we can accommodate them. I, I don't know if they're doing any training on computers at Lilly Library. I can't answer to that. Okay. But to me, I think there are people who would say, oh, I would love to learn. And the senior center, they have computer classes there also, plus they have transportation right. where they can call and say, can I have transportation with the van? I think, what does it cost? A dollar or two dollars or something? They should, they should be able to have that opportunity to learn. And Councilor Perry, you looked like you wanted to jump in. Yeah, um, I, hey, I, I'm really excited. This is, this is a great topic because you know while zoom has helped people we could still expand and i, I think that council of is right you know the library is great senior center and and I, I feel like if we really want to to reach the most amount of people we should start thinking of having different kind of hubs throughout the city i'm sure we should probably contact northampton open media for stuff um this for me seems like a really cool thing that we could add into the resiliency hub once that is there you know like Exactly. That could be a great dedicated place to, you know, A, get out information about our different committees and things right. like that, but also a spot where potentially you could have people just show up and, and come see meetings there. Um, granted, that's down the future, but that we should be thinking about that now, I think. Um, so that those are just my thoughts. Thank you. Councilor Gore, did you want to jump in? Yeah, I, I think the resiliency hub would be a great place to, to have, have like something set up where people could participate in meetings and also 
the Forbes Library most, I think on Thursdays they close at eight. So at least it would, if we set something up at the Forbes Library, it would give people the opportunity to participate in public comment. That's right. Um, and, you know, I think a library is a, a great community space. Um, I can't, I, I'm trying to think of other community spaces that are open to the public where people could participate. I'm not thinking of any of the, the mayor's topic. office. The mayor's <laughs> office. Oh, yeah, right. well, no, that's that's right next to, uh, well, we could do <laughs> possible. Yeah, you know, it sort of inspired me a little bit thinking about like, um, it was the, the police budget hearing so that um, there was a iPad set up right in front of City Hall and people like managed that queue and that was inspiring. Um, How about the Center for but, New Americans? They have all computer classes in there. Okay, we're jumping into community resources, but fortunately the chair <laughs> of that committee is here too. So oh. <laughs> if you have an objection, counsel, you speak up. No, no. Um, my the other the places I would also like to investigate are um, the fire departments because there's somebody there yeah. 24 7. Yeah, that's a good one. And they got that community room in there also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, any any other directions we'd like to, you know, just I know we're in the brainstorming phase, but any other any other Thank things you. we'd like to consider there? Let's put on our thinking caps. <laughs> so right now we've got Forbes Library, which closes at eight. That's great info, um, Counselor. I don't know about Lilly Library, um, the Resilience Hub, which is down the road, but to put it, you know, top of mind, um, the Fire Department's um, Center for New Americans. But honestly, my own thought is like, you know, if we had it in, in all sorts of community spaces that, that just to draw people in um, or make it possible, I don't want to like overstate the popularity of our meetings, but to set the tone that people are welcome. That, that's, yes. that's what I mean. There's got to be other areas. I like the idea about the resilience hub too. Mm -hmm. Well, what if we take those spaces that we've got now, maybe we could divide up and do a little investigating and report back at the March meeting what what may be possible or what resources it would take um and we have the senior center yep the senior and center I'm hearing such good things about the new director okay so of our city services we've got the libraries the senior center the resilience hub might not be online yet but back of mind and the fire departments yeah okay we're missing something. Hmm. Well, the police department is another option. I just didn't want it to throw it out as the only option. Yes. Yeah. That's a very good idea because one of my residents called me today and um, was talking with Chief Casper in regards she is, she signed up and they were supposed to go ahead and have a class during the weekend and because of the protests they had to cancel it because they needed to have the police available at that time and you're right maybe the police department would be something to look at how about the high school yeah Karen, we can send them right down to Antonio. <laughs> Go <on laughs> right. <laughs> Just to get into the logistics, would we have to like have a laptop and like provide a laptop and like equipment for showing the meeting on Zoom? I'm glad you're in logistics. Um, right. How about Ford Library? They do have the, um, the they have computers, there. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, it could be an Antonio question, but right, like I'm thinking, like, could they have a tablet or a computer or something available for the public to use? But I don't know what resources are available. Right, because I do know way back 
when I was down to Antonio's <clears throat> at that point, it was at the municipal building. I couldn't believe the laptops they had in one corner that all needed to be repaired. And then they just donate them out, you know, to different buildings and stuff like that. So maybe it's something to check out to see if he does have any that we could go ahead through city service of having this happen. Okay. Just in case we find an area like Jamila is absolutely correct with Forbes Library, they already have that. Hey, do any It'd of these nice guys, if we could what? just get them and donate them to say, if a resident say ward four, right through every ward, somebody needed a computer, they're trained on it and they're able to sign a piece of paper that yes, they will use it. And then they have to return it back when they no longer want to use it. Something like that. I'm too generous, Kara. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. I mean, it's it's a it's a dividing line at this point of people who have access to that and people exactly. who don't. Yeah. Um, are there any of these brainstormed ideas that someone would like to take back and investigate over the next couple of weeks or four weeks? Yeah, I'm wondering if Antonio could guide us. I'd be glad to reach out to Antonio. Okay, that would be super. I, I can talk to. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just saying I can reach out to the Forbes if it's right down the street. And, and... I know. <laughs> Would you be willing to add Lily to that as well? Or sure. Council Gore, I didn't just step on your toes, did I? I'm so sorry. You were starting. No, to I was okay. going to say Forbes, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> well, you can if you want, you can do that. Is <laughs> it? We got a good list here. We do. Oh, so I um. We, we, I, in such a small meeting, it seems a little silly to do the like raised hands protocol. So I appreciate that we're just having a conversation, um, but I wanted to make sure I understood what just happened. Um, Garrick or Jamila, uh, who ended up claiming the libraries? I, I am flexible. So Jamila, if you want to do it, you can do it. I'll, I'll pick something else. You can, you can claim the libraries. You, okay. You, okay. Garrick's got the, Council Perry's got the libraries. All right. Um, so what we've got left is the fire department, police department, high school, and senior center. And I'm happy to take a couple of these. I just, um, Councilor Gore, you lost your last first choice. Do you have a, yeah. a first choice here? <laughs> um, I can check out the fire department. Okay. That's a good one. <laughs> yep. Okay. I can take the police department. And that leaves us senior center and high school. Um, Councilor Perry, do you mind jumping on one more? Yeah. I don't. Either, either one works for me. Okay. Um, Councilor Gore, do you have one more that either your high school or senior center? Um, senior center would work. All right. All right. Then I'll do the high school. You've got the high school. All right. So I'll just read this back. Um, the libraries, that's Councilor Perry. Senior Center is Councilor Gore. The Fire Department is Councilor Gore. Police Department is me. High School Councilor Perry. And um, Antonio Pagan in the IT Department is me. Okay. Thank you, because I didn't want to obligate myself. Absolutely. Yep. We got, we got you, Councilor. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, and so if you, know, if you just, over the next month, can make a phone call just to gather some information on um, feasibility, logistics, you know, hours, if that's even possible, um, then maybe we can follow this discussion back up in March and see where we've gotten. Like from the 14th of February on, it's a critical point here in my family. Yeah. Okay, so if anybody decides that, no. you know, hey, I don't wanna do the senior center or everything, I'd be glad to step in to help out before those dates. Great. Thank you. What a wonderful committee. It's so pleasant to work with the three of you. Um, any other new business or anything that we haven't brought up yet? I like what we talked about today. 
especially about the appointments going on to boards and commissions. And hopefully there can be some kind of a change. And I do want to say forever, forever. We could, at one point, we were able to bring in agencies, different agencies in the city to come in and speak. All of a sudden that was put to a halt about four years ago or so. And that's a shame because we were able to hear from agencies what they do and all that, that went right down the drain. It might be when the committees, yeah, split. Um, sounds like community resources, um, but yeah. And I, I just feel that's so important. Okay. Um, any, any other discussion? All right, then uh, that brings us to item eight. Oh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Okay, a motion to adjourn made by Councillor Perry, seconded by Councillor Gore. Um, Councillor Gore? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Perry? Yes. And Councillor Foster? Yes. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.